Alright guys, in this episode I'm going to be playing with some oil washes. But recently I have been experimenting a lot with oil washes on my miniatures. One of my friends, Cami, has been going on at me for years to try an oil wash. I know a lot of the kind of the big fancy painters try them as well, so I thought it was about time I tried them out. And of course, sorry for my voice and my splutteriness, I'm very ill at the moment, so I can only apologise about that. I think the kind of the oil washes make things look really gritty and like grim dank, you know, all that kind of that kind of look. I think the oil washes do actually work really well. It's a different, completely different style of painting to what I'm used to. Um, but without further ado, I've been yapped on long enough, so let's get to painting, shall we? <laughs> So as you can see here guys, I've got this Dunland commission to do, um, I've got some Dunland warriors, I've got three big heroes, Thryden, Frida and the Oathmaker, the absolute top shagger, just the best guy ever. I seem to remember my pals Oathmaker killing my Balrog, that was a great time for me, um, I've got a load of Jakeys here, and I've got some of the lovely new Medbury Huskarls to paint. These are absolutely lovely models, Mr. Medbury. Um, I'm definitely going to pick up some of these myself because they just look awesome. I think I'll maybe do some first stage stuff with these. I thought maybe Axeman a Brethel or something like that. But anyway, I'm yapping on as I usually do, so let's get on to the actual project. So, first up, these are the two that I have completed with the oil wash. As you can see, it gives this lovely, kind of gritty, worn dirty look on the shields. I think it just looks perfect for Dunland. Probably anything else. I think it's just the, you know, it really suits the wetter look, like the kind of grungy, dungeony, dungeony? I think it really suits that kind of gritty, dingy kind of look that the wetter, wetter Lord of the Rings has. Um, and yeah, I really, really like it, how it's turned out. And it's also super, super easy as well. The only problem with getting into it is probably the kind of cost of startup. You probably will find yourself spending about 40 quid on initial paints and stuff. So I'll go through what you need in a second. So what are the first few things you need for an oil wash? And it is super simple. I would recommend picking up some of these kind of metal wee mixing trays. You need mineral spirits. I would go with the older list ones, just just check that out on Amazon because it means your room just doesn't stink of shit the whole time and you don't get headaches and stuff, so I would go odorless. Um, you need a manky old brush, so a brush that you probably won't use on anything else, just a manky old one. Um, maybe two. A couple of, couple of, couple of old manky brushes. Um, I recommend some pipettes. You see this one's been through the wars, look at that, fucking stinking. And you need, of course, your oil paints. You need two, well, you need whatever colours you want. I think the easiest one to start with is a kind of gritty look. You need a black and burnt umber. I've gone with ivory black. It's like a bit more, a bit more matte. And they have to be artist grade. I was stupid and bought student grade and the pigment just wasn't good enough. So that was a waste of money. So you don't don't do the same mistake as me. Make sure they are artist grade. You can get smaller ones, but I just went with I thought this'll last me forever. Um and it will. So you know, eight pounds each and it'll last me forever. And that's all you need. No, that is not all you need. You also need some cotton buds. You can pick these up. I went for the eco ones because, you know, fuck the planet. Uh, or don't fuck the planet. Um just you need hundreds of these, so I went with the eco ones because I don't, so I don't feel bad about polluting the ocean with plastic, and some generic kitchen roll as well. So what do we do next? What you do is you paint your minis up to a state where you've got all the base layers done. You can, I think, highlight them at this stage if you wish, but I prefer to do that after. I like to see how the wash settles and how it looks, and then you can do a little bit of highlighting after if you so wish. So that's what I did on this one. So when the wash was finished, I dry brushed after it. And what you want to do is get your oil paint, and I usually do boop, 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 
three boops of brown, three little jobbies, a boop, oh that's quite a lot of black there, but that'll just have to do. Um, oh shit, where's the fucking tissue paper here? Normally use that for wanking, so it's good to have that handy there. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our three blobs, three normal jobbies and a Guinness jobby. And what we do then is we add our mineral spirits. And you want to what? Oh! Dangerous game. Just add a little bit to start. And I don't think this is my fucked brush. Is this my fucked brush? It is, it is now. Um, and you just mash it in. Mash, 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 mash. Get it all mixed in. Some riveting content here. I'll probably time lapse this. Keep mixing until it's a nice, nice runny diarrhea consistency. You know, post post vindaloo poo. Now, this this is where it gets scary. This is where it gets scary because you put it on. And you go, oh my god. It's all black and brown and covered up all the lovely detail that I spent ages painting. But trust the process, my friends. We trust the process. I was skeptical. But old wizard Kami has shown me the way. And he is an oily man, a very oily man. Chaser, are you seeing this? Shit. We got four out of here. Hey, Chaser, are you seeing this? Oh, shit. And that is it done. Cover the whole mini. Absolutely though. Absolutely soak the cunt in it. And then put that aside and we leave it and we move on. Right, and that's them done. Remember to keep your manky brush separate from your good brushes. That is them all done now. And I know what you're thinking. John, have you had them up your arse? Yes, but I've also oil washed them. That's where the main tone difference comes from. They will look really brown and black. And you have to just trust the process. It is very... The first time I did it, I was like, fuck. But you just just trust the process. Trust the process. That's that's the that's the that's the buzzwords for today. Trust the process. So what we do now is we leave these to dry for maybe twenty minutes to forty minutes and until there's a kind of until it doesn't glisten as much and you can see it's cured a little bit. So the time has passed. Um, I've probably left these for about two hours actually, a bit longer, because um, I gave them quite a heavy wash. I wanted to make sure that it had time to kind of properly kind of gloss over a little bit. Don't touch them, you get oily fingers. They will eventually go pure matte when they are fully cured, but we want to activate it and work on it before it gets to that stage. So all we're going to do now is fill up one of these little trays with mineral spirits and get our cotton buds and start wiping the paint off them. Hopefully what that does is it brings the paint off the most prominent features and leaves it in the deep recesses, giving it this really gritty, grimy, awesome look. Let's get cracking, shall we?
I've left the oil wash to cure overnight. Um, some are fully cured, it does take about 48 hours. That's one of the major disadvantages of oil washes is they just take so long to, to fully cure. But then that does mean you can reactivate them and keep changing things if you wish. So what I'm going to do now while I'm waiting for that to cure fully is I'm going to put the base ready stuff on the bases because that takes ages to dry as well. So you might as well have these two drying steps going at the same time to save time. Yeah, let's do that shall we. So guys, we are back. Um, it's been probably about 48 hours since I've done these. Um, and they're looking quite dry. Still needs a little bit of time to cure. Um, I'm a bit too scared to do any highlighting just yet. But as you can see, the bases and the majority of the wash is now nice and dry. And it's got this lovely dark grimy look, which is exactly what we're after. I think it really matches the kind of wetter look. So uh, what, I'm what we can do now though is I can put some tufts on the bases and that will sh help us see what the miniature will look like when it's finished. Like I love the shields with the, the ink water. It looks so like gritty and dirty. They've been fighting for ages. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying oil washes. I think they add a whole different kind of level of painting. So that adds a whole other technique to my painting repertoire. So if I want to do dank, dirty, grungy looking stuff, I will go straight to an oil wash. I think it'll be perfect for like orcs and stuff as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all the tufts on these and then I'm going to highlight them. <laughs>
So guys, let's discuss the pros and cons of oil washes. You know, first of all, probably the biggest one is they're a bit daunting um, and they're quite expensive to start. You know, you need a couple of different bits and bobs and each paint can set you back £8. But guys, once you buy that paint, it will last forever, unless you're using a lot. Another disadvantage is that they take ages to dry. There are some videos online on how to speed it up using like radiators and stuff like that. The base time to dry is so much longer than an acrylic Games Workshop shade or any other company's shade for that matter. However, that does have its own little advantage is that you can always reactivate it and if you're not happy with the way the wash looks you can reactivate it and play with it a bit until you're happy which is it's kind of a double-edged sword. And finally, my last annoyance with oil washes is how messy they are. They get everywhere, it gets on your fingers. Yeah, you'll see my, there's like loads of oil wash stains on my mat now. But then again, isn't this hobby messy in general? Like, making this was horrifically messy. My favourite thing about the oil wash is I don't need to worry about a glossy finish. I think you know it's a bit of a meme on this channel is how many times I use a Games Workshop wash and it dries glossy. It drives me absolutely insane. I like to know what the model is going to look like when it's finished. There is a bit of trusting process because it is glossy for quite a while until it cures but it will always cure nice and matte which I absolutely love. I am sick to death of this 50-50 flip of my washes drying and I know you stick the brush in it and you, you do this and you mix it all up and it shouldn't dry glossy but mine still do. I'll show you that on my Canonburg Crimson. I've not sadly not tried the coloured ones yet like I might get a red wash because my, as I said my crimson keeps drying gloss and I'd love to see how that finishes on some like cloaks and stuff. I think the rich deep pigment you get from oil washes with a red will look fantastic so I really want to try that. So however this isn't the end of the video here. Um, I do want to show you some other bits and bobs that I've done. I've oil washed all these Chaos Cultists that I've done a while ago. I've done a Gundabad Orc here for my next commission. I've even done some 3D printed Grimdank Elves, which I think have actually turned out really nice. I also want to show you that it's not just new armies that you're painting that you can do. I've got this old House of Hador army. I'll put the link to the video at the end of this one if you want to have a look at that. There's always been something niggling at me about it. So what I did was I gave one or two of the guys an oil wash and I think it looks absolutely fantastic as you can see here. So these guys have been, you know, supposed to be fighting all day at the Battle of Unnumbered Tears and they've retreated back to the Glen of Serik and I think this gritty look really suits that and it makes them look like they've been in the thick of it all day. However, it does mean now that I need to do 120 other models from the rest of the army. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this tutorial on oil washes and my way of doing it. There are a lot of tutorials out there already, but I thought I would show you on some Lord of the Rings boys and what it can achieve, that nice, wetter, dirty look. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think you may now try an oil wash. If I have inspired one or two people to do it, that's me happy. And also, as usual, a huge thank you to everyone who watches and comments, etc and my Patreon supporters. I've been quite ill recently, so I know the videos have been a bit uh, few and far between, but thank you for sticking with me. It's, it means the world to me, thank you so much. Hopefully I get rid of this loggy soon, but it feels like it's been sticking with me forever. If you want to join the Patreon, the link is in the comments. We do have a very active Discord. I am in there talking to people most days. We have games nights, and we have a book club where we're going through the Silmarillion at the moment. My Discord chat is so good, it will put you to sleep.
Oh man. Let's make a new channel for him, shall we? Sleepy Joe. There you go, Sleepy Joe. Rest in peace. Okay. That's a great advertisement there, isn't it? So yeah, thank you very much. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. still there thanks for watching everyone and um, don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to give my bell a good old ring A whole different technique to painting, but you do need to. But fuck, I'm so ill. I can't even fucking think. Um. Like grim dank, you know, all that kind of that kind of look, and I think it looks really fucking shut up, computer. And this camera stand is wild, it's just good wobbly. We were wobble, we were wobble, we were wobble, flop. We were, we were, we were, we were. We were. <laughs> Ugh!